hello. You came back. Thank you so much for joining us for our next video, which is about resume development, everybody's favorite topic. My name is Bridget Marty, Senior Associate Director and Career Coach for uh, Carlson Business Career Center, joining you as part of our Green Light series. And we are going to be talking about resumes. We have a couple of videos about resumes. We've broken the series down into some more digestible nuggets of information. So um, join me. First things first, what will be most helpful to you is to work along as we go through this session. So I invite you to hit pause, visit our website, as you see on the screen, z.umn.edu slash gbcc, and navigate to the resume section. It might be list, it, it's listed in a few areas. Just search resumes. We have a variety of Carlson resume templates that I'll discuss later on, but you can pick the template that works best for you. They tend to be categorized by your program name, so you might want to look for that one. We also have ones that are for um, kind of earlier career professionals, so eight years or less of work experience and then 10 years plus of, well, eight years, nine years experience of more. So access that resume template. It's going to be helpful for you as we move through this content. Um, next is to set up a VMOC account. VMOC is on, the link to VMOC is on the same page as our resumes. VMOC is our AI tool that will do up to 10 resume reviews a year on your resume, and it gives you immediate feedback on it. It's a really great tool that we um, pay a cool subscription fee for, so I encourage you to use it. Um, some of you may have already have access to VMOC, you might have used it already, um, but it's nice just to have that VMOC account ready to go and have your template. So um, maybe you've hit pause, you're coming back, but we're going to keep on moving forward. This section, we're going to talk a little bit about purpose, preparation, and mindset for a resume, and then we're going to get into the formatting. So as you are getting ready to be prepared for those interviews, we are always refining and telling your story appropriately. We've gone through elevator pitch, tell me about yourself, personal brand. We are going to be applying those into resume and your cover letter coming up in a bit. So join me. Your resume is a marketing tool. We say this over and over and over. It is a marketing tool. It is not an entire work history of everything you've ever done, but rather it serves as that first impression Sometimes, unless you've done some networking first, it's meant to reflect your personal brand, skills, achievements, and your career story, which is a lot to pack into a one or two page document. But that also just gives us freedom to eliminate the fluff and stay really focused. And as you'll see this quote, I included the most important tool you have on a resume is language. That language, your personal brand usage, the verbs that you will use that you also find in the position descriptions that you're applying for. So important to be thoughtful about how we are building that resume. The old way of just putting everything on your resume and sending it in is out. The new way is a very tailored, marketed approach. In general, best practices for building that resume, know your audience, know who you're going to be speaking to, have those cool personal brand verbs and messages that we've been discussing um, throughout different parts of this series. Have those at the ready. Keep your formatting simple and crisp and aim to have that bullet point, that section, that whole entire resume be memorable for all the good reasons. When we talk about knowing your audience, there is somebody on the other side of that resume reading it. Yes, applicant tracking systems are also reviewing resumes, but more often than not, as you get to higher levels in your career, there's an actual person reading that resume. So take time to review position descriptions, snoop around a company's website and their social medias, um, different platforms and accounts. Look at LinkedIn profiles of folks who work there or of the company itself. Um, look back to notes that you've taken on networking or information sessions. Um, anything you know about the organization, if they are a highly mission-driven organization, if they are um, committed to sustainability, if they are going through a merger, if they are going through a divestiture, um, know the organization. This is the time to reflect what you know about that organization in your own language. Little changes to your resume that reflect the language of the organization can make a big difference. 
Also, those core messages. We've talked about your personal branding words as an important um, element to include. And I mentioned for myself, I often talk about relationship building, able to um, be a strategic thought partner. Those are part of my personal brand. But we want to add to that and make sure we're also highlighting core competencies in your resume. As we get to building your resume bullets later on in that one of the other videos, we'll want to be able to tie back every bullet point to one of these main competencies. And these are the big competencies that are consistently sought after in a variety of functions and levels of employment when we I do an analysis of the job postings that we see come through the Career Center. Um, these are very common and yet very important uh, core competencies we are looking for candidates to demonstrate. What's not listed on there is explicitly, but just on the bottom row is that industry and functional expertise. That's where we get into things like um, wanting a certain kind of technical acumen, experience or knowledge working in a certain environment or um, in with a certain type of product. Those are the things that are kind of unique, but the rest is really consistently looked for across a variety um, of roles. So as we're preparing to build your resume, you wanna have those vocabulary words on hand you want to know if you are applying to a role as a product manager in a software company, what are those key skills and uh, competencies that they're looking for? So having a sense of the audience that you're writing towards. Also, as you are looking to generate content for your bullet points, pull out those year-end performance reviews. Hopefully you are getting noticed and recognized for some of the great things that you're doing. And those can be um, achievements, projects that you've worked on. Those are great things to add into your bullet point. Also pro tip, as you work, as you manage your career and you're going through life, um, when you do have those annual review times, that's a great time to add a bullet or two to your resume. Just keep it fresh as you go along. Formatting. Why this Carlson templates? So Carlson as a nationally ranked business school. Um, we align to the best practices of our industry. So other nationally ranked business schools also use similar templates to these. Why? Because recruiters at larger companies are going through a lot of resumes and it's not fun for them to have to adjust to a variety of different formats. Hence, we use a very simple, straightforward format as do other business schools. It's fairly simple. And you may say, hold on a second, Coach Bridget, how am I gonna differentiate myself from everybody else? You differentiate yourself with the impact of your language. We don't wanna be all sizzle and no steak, okay? A fancy format is a fancy format, but it's the content of the bullet points that matters. In addition, <clears throat> this, because we are limited to one page for most folks, if you have eight years or less of work experience, we have to be really concise and succinct. We can't put in a lot of fluff and extra, which aligns to how someone reads it. They're often kind of skimming through it as quickly as possible. So we want it to be um, long enough that they still want to read it, short enough that they want to read it and not too long that they didn't read. In addition, if any of you are current candidates that will be working with our office through Carlson recruiting activities, so if you're going through a campus recruiting initiative, or if you are putting your resume on Handshake, um, we do encourage you to use this template. Again, it's the template that is standard. You don't want to stand out in this process for not following the guidelines. You want to have you use the guidelines. So that one page format, as I've mentioned a few times, great for any candidate who has about eight to 10 years or less of experience. If you have more experience than that, we'll, we'll show you a template in a second, but this is pretty succinct. You'll notice 10.5 size font, um, about a half inch to an inch side margins times New Roman. The header at the top is going to be the same header on your resume as it is on your cover letter. So it's nice and matching and it shows that consistency. You'll notice the format for this one page is education at the top because we really want to highlight um, that your candidacy or that you have earned your graduate degree, then experience. And then there's always like the third section to balance things out. And there can be a variety of ways that we uh, tackle that third section. It's kind of the bonus area. We encourage you to save it as a PDF and also as a document. For those folks that have more than eight to 10 years of experience, we have another format that we offer on our website that you can use. This is a two page. What's different is there's a summary at the top and the header is a little bit different. And then the education section is moved to the end. We want you to 
bring your whole self to this process. So if this format doesn't speak to you, you can use the one page format and extend it onto two pages if you have more than eight to 10 years of professional experience. Um, also with this two page format, you don't have to fully um, complete all two pages. You, maybe you have a page and a half. Um, no matter what, this is an option for you if you'd like. Thank you. And we're going to see you in our next video where we're going to be talking about how to format some of your sections and make super cool bullet points.